All right, it is Friday, and I think we're gonna talk. I'm here at Illinois College, which is in Jacksonville, Illinois, and we're gonna talk ISO out of the spread, which obviously I know very little about. Coach Alba, Coach Alba. Hey, Coach, how are we? Let me go ahead and take it from here. Let's go to my office. I'll tell you what it's all about. So, hi, Football Friday fans. My name is Travis James. I'm the offensive coordinator here at Illinois College. And today, we're going to run you through a basic idea of what it is that we do here. And a big piece of that is being able to establish a dominant rushing attack in every formation that we line up. And a big piece of that is to run the ISO play. So, I'm really excited to get you learned and taught about everything that we do. And um, let's have some fun this Friday. So today, guys, we're going to go through a very important drive for us during the course of the year. Uh, it's our last game of the year. Not only does it is it a good, it's going to be um, a great learning point for all of our guys to move on in the future of the offense, but we also work through quite a few situations as we move through and down the field. As you can see on the tape, we're backed up, just about as deep as you can be on the field, which is a situation in and of itself. So you get to run into my mind a little bit in terms of what we're thinking about, so let's get rolling. So here we are. One of our main thoughts when we're in backed up offense is that we really don't want to move a lot of gaps up front. We're trying not to pull offensive linemen, but what we're trying to do instead is make sure that we are moving to get out to what we consider our, our green zone, which is the 10 yard line. So here we go, let's roll. So here we are, we're in a two by two set on the right hash, and we're running what we consider our veer play, which we call push here in our, in our system, in our terminology. So you see Greg Cross does a good job getting downhill um, in the A gap. And notice that in the boundary, we are still reading what's going on on the defense. We have a little bit of a miscue by the quarterback's eyes, but we're getting, a, we're, and we're getting stacked up down the left side of the formation. So here we are from the tight view. Gives us a good idea of what's going on in the line of scrimmage. One of our biggest key points in zone is that we do not want to give up penetration on the line of scrimmage. But a big problem on the first snap of this drive is that you're going to notice the left guard, because his hands are wide, is inviting number 37, that two technique, into his chest. That forces Greg to bounce this bad boy a little bit sooner than he'd like to. Combine that fact with our center, hopping his base away from the Mike linebacker, and we don't have very good push on first down, and we're already in a little bit of a rough situation, still being pinned deep. So here we are. Second play of the drive. Obviously, we moved down to the left, to the left hash in this case, and so now we want to be able to have a plus one run at the point of attack. Essentially, we're trying to get a double team and an additional puller, uh, ISO player, and in this case, we're going to get another ISO player. Like I said, backed up, we're trying not to pull linemen because then we have to replace gaps. And so here, we're playing a four down team in this case, so we're going to run ISO to the right side. So we're going to get a double team on this nose guard, we're going to get a big block on the five, big block on the three, then we're going to fan the backside working with the tackle and working with the backside tight end. Obviously, our super back is going to move and he's going to ISO 36. Our running back is going to take this bad boy. He's going to slide step and go in the A gap, running as fast as possible, as fast as possible. You see Greg here, number 21. He is using the power of the aiming point. The power of the aiming point, that A gap splits right open because the double team comes undone. Next thing you know, we're out and moving almost to the 10 yard line, which is exactly where we want to be. So here we are. So once again, we've moved the ball out. Um, we're on the third down situation, trying not to move gaps. Well, Greg did a great job on second down, moving that ball, getting us a chance to convert on third down. So here we are in a third and short situation. 
and we're about to run what we consider veer. It's also an RPO. You'll see the receivers at the bottom of the screen running their veer path. The quarterback doesn't get the indicator to throw the ball that we teach him to, but Greg does a great job once again staying on the aiming point with a lot of power and has an explosive run for another 10-yard gain, keeping the drive alive deep in our own end. So here we go. Once again, we're playing four down. And so for us, you see the left guard who had all those problems earlier. Now he's cut his split down. That's something that we build into the, into the install of every play. Every play has a particular split rule for the offensive line. A buddy split, a play where you want to be close to your buddy because you're going to need him for help, or a dummy split where you know that you're either going to solo block a guy so you can take your split out, or you're going to double team a guy so you take your split in. In this case, he's got a dummy split that works out well. They're trying to crash the gaps with the outside linebacker, as you see but we believe that the power of our aiming point and the speed of our backs is going to beat that outside in pursuit and we're in good shape. Here we are moving along. This was a big RPO for us as we worked into the week. The quarterback once again is a particular indicator that's telling him what to do. Obviously being late in the game, we moved the ball very well throughout the course of the entire game with this particular concept, but you can see the defense gets, uh, gets pretty intelligent, running trap coverage to the field. They end up triggering on the, on the running back, and thank God he dropped the ball because that would have been a loss of, down, that would have been a loss of yardage on, for us on first down. So you can see inside, we're block and run. The offensive line doesn't really care what's going on in terms of how the skill guys are operating. They're block and run. Quarterback doesn't get his indicator. He throws the ball, and we're in good shape. Obviously, we're in a second and 10 situation, so now we know that we got to keep the ball moving down the, down the field. So here we are. Once again, it's not all about what's good that's happening to us. We got to go through some of the bad. And so, obviously, we had a defense called right into our scheme. The last clip, and now we have a player who's not on the same page with us um, in terms of the blocking scheme. And so, here you see, as we look from the tight copy, as we get rolling along, fast forward a little bit, what we're trying to run right here is essentially split zone. So, the offensive line is going to zone away running that inside zone veer style concept, and the super back is supposed to slick off the backside edge. He's a senior and had a little bit of a brain fart late in his career on the last drive of his career, and he ends up running to the call side, and we got quite the clogged up run lanes at the point of attack, especially as they're playing that scrape exchange game off of the, off of the backside edge. And so now, because of a poor play call on my part on first down, and then a, uh, a blocking scheme misunderstanding on, the, on second down, we're in a third and long situation, a situation that we rep quite a bit during the course of the week. And so here we are. So we know even though we're trying to ice the game, the ability to throw the ball consistently is something that we need to keep um, in our back pocket. And one of the ways that we feel like we can do that successfully on third down quite a bit is with crossing patterns. And so you're gonna see that here. And so you see Andy Webb, who's the number two receiver to the boundary, does a great job running his crossing route. Obviously, he's getting zone coverage, so he's gonna settle down right in that opposite B gap. Devin, the quarterback, delivers a great ball on time, and we allow Andy to run for space. Picks up a huge first down for us late in the game as we continue to pad our lead, which we had about a two-score lead at this time, but we don't wanna give the ball back to our opponent. So moving on now, we've converted, it's first down, we still want to eat the clock up in our four minute offense situation. So now we're in a, at a pretty traditional formation for us in our near back formation and we're about to start running what we consider to be our play, which is the power play. So I'm going to go from the tight copy here and you can see everything that's going on. So in our world, power simple. I don't know very many different ways to block power but with base rule. And so in this case, we're going to use our gap rules on the front side and we're going to block our inside gaps, tracking back to the inside side backer. Obviously, we're going to block back with the center, pulling with the backside guard to knock the snot bubbles into the Mike linebacker. We're going to kick out the defensive end at the point of attack, gap seal funnel on the backside. Once again, the path of the back is very important to this play. And so we are a same side handoff team. And so the back is going to slide to Devin and get downhill once again in the A-gap. Jason's taught in this particular case that if that A-gap is closed, follow the puller. And you see right here in this particular case, the A-gap is closed, he follows the puller, does a good job with speed on his aiming point, and we have a big gain once again on first down. So here we are, 
they're getting a call from me on the sideline and I'm giving a tempo call to our guys to make sure that they're running the correct, uh, the same play once again out of the same formation. And so you see Devin here before the snap, he's calming everybody down, we're running the clock down and now we snap the ball. Once again, it's power again. One of the challenges of four minute offense that we talk about all the times as a staff is that you're trying to combat a defense in a pretty one-sided situation. And so they understand that, they're, that we are gonna run the ball to ice the game out. And so in this particular situation, here we come again with power. They, we still get a three yard gain on second down. However, we are still in a situation where they're adding too many hats to the box, which tells me as the play caller that if I'm gonna make sure that we convert consistently to ice the game, then I need to think about how I'm calling the offense a little bit differently. So you see, in this particular situation, we don't get over to the, out, the backside inside backer who's playing over across the top. And so we're in a little bit of trouble here. The, you see the right tackle, he puts two hands and buries his eyes on that double team, which is resulting in the problem that we have right there. So here we are now on third down. And so now I have to take the situation into my own hands as a play caller and trust that our system, because we do things and teach things a particular way, that we're gonna be able to convert in a big situation. So now we know that the safety and the Sam have gotten pretty nosy and taken what was a six man box and has now given us an eight man box. So we have to look for the biggest outlet for us to be able to convert in a long yarded situation. And that's exactly what we do with an action pass to our single receiver. So we knew that safety was getting nosy. Then we had, I have the confidence in our quarterback, I have the confidence in our own line, I have the confidence in our skill guys to be able to throw the ball deep down the middle of the field in a four minute situation. Not because I'm trying to gamble, but because it is a core tenant of our offensive system. And you see Andy Webb, a senior receiver, coming down with a big catch once again in his last football game. So now we're moving on. So. We, we've converted once again, so now we can get back on pace, get back in our groove, and now we're gonna put the ball once again on the ground. And so in this particular situation, I'll go to the tight copy so you guys can understand and see. This is another variation of ISO, which I'm also gonna talk to Coach Alba about today. And so in this particular situation, we don't want the quarterback um, running the ball. We have a saying around here offensively that when we're trying to ice the game and we're trying to get out of a critical situation, we're gonna give it to the best back and run it in the best hole. And so in this case, you've clearly seen that we've been able to run the A-gap consistently throughout the course of the game. So we're gonna block the backside with the tight end. We're gonna get the tackle now as the ISO player pulling around for number 36, the Mike linebacker. We're gonna double team back to the will. Everybody else is a man blocker. You're gonna see a running back once again that's using the power of his aiming point. And here we go. Here's Bo Davis coming downhill. He's pressing the A-gap. And look what it does to those linebackers. Look at 36 and 38 gets sucked up to the line of scrimmage. 38 runs right into the double team. 36 runs right into the ISO player, and Bo, understanding that that A-gap is closed once again, follows the puller. Very simple set of rules. Because he follows the puller, he's able to bounce out, and then he can go be an athlete in space. Get into the part of the field, which we call the sidewalk, which is right here. It's four yards in from the sideline, and we believe that once you get to the sidewalk, you can run away from all that inside-out pursuit all these ugly guys in white jerseys who are coming to attack you and tackle the football. Bo gets out to the sidewalk, once again tiptoeing on the sideline, and he almost scores. So for us, moving now to the end of the drive, we're getting back to a play that we love and we run all the time, especially in a critical situation like this, and especially in the red zone, which we're in right now, which is power. We get to it with a million formations and a million actions and a million ball carriers, but here it is, basic 21 personnel power. Let's go to the tight to take a look. So here we go, and we know that we're gonna run it strong. There's not really a whole lot hiding from what we got going on right here. We've been able to pound the defense down and run them into submission, and we got pullers and kick out guys running inside out and a, deep, and a running back who's determined to score and once again expand our lead. And with this point and with this touchdown, we went up 21 points to ice the game and win our last football game of the season. Guys, I hope you got a really good look at not only the, some of the important pieces and central pieces of our offense, but once again, how they apply specifically to situational football. And I know that we went through quite a few things today. And so as we were talking, if you had any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is my first name, dot my last name, at mail.ic.edu. Once again, that's Travis.James 
at mail.ic.edu. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're excited here at Blue Boy Football. We're finishing up the last pieces of our recruiting class, and we know that 2017 is going to be quite an exciting year for us here on the Hilltop. Have a great Friday. Thanks for joining us here at Illinois College today. We appreciate you coming into our home. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And for more information about Illinois College, make sure you click the links below in the description.